Apple forcing hardware upgrades may cause yet another class action lawsuit. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again, joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness of the lap song is so good, so good. We're hanging out by the fire, <laughs> digital fire it is. It is cold, we're down here in South Florida and it's in the 30s, what is that? My blood is just not, just prepared for it. It's just thinned out over the years. Anyways, I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're going to be talking about Apple and the nastiness that they do on a regular basis. So we want to get into this a little bit. It's like a PSA. You just need to know this stuff before you get into the Apple ecosphere. Before I get into all this, I want to say that I am an Apple fan. Not a fanboy, but a fan. I've been using Apple ever since about the 80s, maybe mid 80s with an Apple II Plus and an Apple IIe. That's how I started, right? In a Sinclair and some of the older devices. So I've had Apples for a long time. That's an Apple back there. So I am a fan, but never a fanboy, right? I don't toe the line, but when I see things that are just absolute crap, I have to call them and this is what's going on today. Once again, it's a PSA. Before we jump into this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this video, even in the least, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here and then click all notifications. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, if you're looking for a VPN, the nice folks over there at PureVPN gave me a link. That link will provide you with 80% off. So if you need 256-bit encryption for your home or office, or if you just want a static IP or do port forwarding, you can do all of that with PureVPN. So go check them out. I'll put a link down in the pinned comment as well as the description. So let's get right into this. I found an article over at 9to5Mac and they talked about this viral tweet that went out. I went over to this viral tweet and I read through and I read through a whole bunch of comments and it just really pissed me off. And that's one of the reasons why I want to do this PSA. I did a PSA like this way back in the past when Apple was doing this underhanded thing with batteries. And I'll get into that in just a second. But let me read through some of this article for you. And I want to give you my commentary. And it's going to be a little bit heated, but just understand where I'm coming from. And chances are, you'll probably agree with me. You might not, but if you do or you don't, down in the comment area below this video, let's have the discussion. So 9 to 5 Max says this, a viral tweet today highlights a somewhat frustrating limitation with the Apple TV software. As of a recent software update, tvOS expects users to have access to an iPhone or iPad in order to do things like accept new iCloud terms and conditions or update their Apple ID settings. Although most people who use the Apple TV 4K box are deeply ensconced in the Apple ecosystem, this does not apply to everyone. Up until recently, an Apple TV could be used essentially independently. It was assumed to be a standalone device, not an accessory. Not so much anymore. Moreover, these changes mean Apple TV users who have Macs, but no personal iOS device, are left in a lurch. In the past, Apple TVs can be used without needing access to other Apple hardware. You can set up the Apple TV from scratch completely independently, install apps, and make purchases. Typical Apple ID management duties can be performed from a web browser on a PC if occasionally necessary. This viral tweet showcases perhaps the most egregious example. Accepting new iCloud terms and conditions requires an iOS device. What the frick? Rather than allowing the user to read and accept the new terms for the Apple TV on the television itself, the box says you must use an iOS device to do it, specifically an iOS device running iOS 16 or iPad OS 16 or later. I'm going to get into that in just a second. A similar prompt can appear requesting customers to, quote, update Apple ID settings by bringing their iPhone near the Apple TV. 
In both cases, these prompts can be temporarily dismissed, but they frequently reoccur until they have been dealt with. Some system features may not be available until they are resolved. So in short, if you do not have an Apple iPhone or an iPad that is current, basically you're screwed. You can't use your Apple TV. How in the hell is that? So even worse, and what I was alluding to just a second ago is they are forcing the iOS device. It doesn't matter if it's an iPad or a iPhone to have the latest and greatest OS. The latest OS is iOS 16. But how about if you have an iPad or an iPhone that is maybe three, four years old or something, and you cannot install, according to Apple, the latest OS. So now you have a iPhone or an iPad that you could use, but you can't use because they won't let you. Why? Because you can't install the latest OS on that device. Basically planned obsolescence. They are bricking your device via software or lack thereof. I remember, and I'm sure a lot of you do also, a class action lawsuit that was levied against Apple. And what that was found was Apple was purposefully slowing down the older phones, the older iPads, based on the age of the battery within them. They come up with a percentage or a usage amount, and then they get an idea of how much more battery life is, let's say, left with this battery, and then proportionally, they slow down the processor. So people would notice this. And as you use your iPhone, I used to tell my wife this all the time, you know, this damn thing keeps going slower and slower and slower. What is going on? And then my wife would say, ah, it's getting old. You probably need a new one. And that's exactly what Apple wanted people to say. <laughs> Think about it. So they just literally on a bell curve slowed the processor based on the age of the battery. So as the battery got older, the processor got slower and you're like, God, I need a new phone. This damn thing is going so damn slow. And the court said, you know what? That's bullshit. You can't do that. And they got sued and ended up Apple having to fix it. So now when you go into your phone, you can see that there's a battery area and you can turn that setting off. I remember Apple saying, you know, it's for the benefit of our customers. We want our customers to have the best experience. So we just slow the processor down. So there's no hiccups that could possibly happen if you run out of battery life. No, you have the phone on max, the CPU on max until the battery is dead. That's what you do. The same thing holds true with Mac hardware. This device back here, I have an older MacBook Air. These devices can no longer receive the latest OS, right? They can't because Apple won't allow it. I can't install the latest OS on that. I can't install the latest OS on my older MacBook Air. Why? Because they say so. So what that means is other software that requires the latest OS cannot be installed either. Matter of fact, some of the older iPads cannot even use the latest version of Safari or Google, Chrome, nothing. They have basically turned these devices into doorstops. Once again, planned obsolescence. I mean, it is crap. You should be able to install the latest and greatest operating system onto these devices, even if your experience is somehow slower or degraded. There's no reason that you shouldn't be able to, but there is a reason, once again, so that Apple can force you to purchase new hardware. This is an example with Apple TV. If you do not have an iPhone or an iPad, you cannot use your Apple TV. And if you do not have the latest and greatest iPhone and iPad, or at least one that will facilitate the installation of the latest OS or iOS, you cannot use it. It is absolute unfair business practice, planned obsolescence in its finest, and it should be quelled. There should be yet another class action lawsuit levied against Apple to fix this kind of stuff.
This affects millions, hundreds of millions of Apple users where their devices are being basically broken via software or lack thereof right from the manufacturer who created it in the first place. I feel that if I buy a piece of hardware, I should be able to use the piece of hardware until it breaks. When it breaks, I can buy a new one. Or if there's something new in a latest and greatest version of it that I want to upgrade, I should be able to upgrade at that time and say, yeah, I want the newest one because it has, I don't know, iRetina detection or something. Okay, fine. So I get the latest and greatest. That doesn't mean that the old one should break. That doesn't mean that the company can break your hardware after you pay your hard-earned money for it. Because that's what they're doing. They are breaking your hardware with their software, or once again, lack thereof. I don't even know how it's legal. How is that? I want someone that's an attorney out there to tell me how it's legal that it's like buying a car and using the car for five years. And after that five years, it breaks because Chevy or Ford or Toyota said, you know what? You need a new car and it just breaks. You can't install the new version of the software that starts the motor, let's say. And that's it. How is that even a possibility? I literally, I don't get it. I really, really don't get it. But I want to know your thoughts on this. I want to know what you think. Do you think that this is bullshit? Do you think that there should be some type of class action lawsuit levied against Apple for this type of unfair business practice? I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you think. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have. Throw the video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click this little button over there. And don't forget to click all, all notifications. I've been talking to the people over there at YouTube and the, you guys have told me, hey, you went live. No one told me. My notifications are set to all. So I contacted them over there at YouTube. They're like, eh, eh. Have them disconnected and then reconnect all. So... If you guys are right now set to notifications for this channel, deset it or unset it or whatever, and then set it again. Why that is, I don't know. Maybe they'll fix it. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But that's what they tell me. Also, if you want to contribute to the channel, you can do so by clicking the little thank you button down there or even better, become a member of the channel. We would love to have you. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like, and if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.